We are leaving the cold temperatures here in Sweden and traveling to Thailand, which means that it will be very warm and sunny. Children outgrow their clothes every season and therefore we don't have that many summer clothes for them right now. So we're packing the things that we have and we will buy more clothes for them when we arrive at Thailand. Me and my daughter went out buying some toys for her to use on the flight, since it's a really long flight and we want to keep her away from screens as much as we can. Nu har vi många böcker här. Ja. Vill du ha lilla Anna också? Ja. Tack. Så. Så. Så, vad det är bra. Mm. Bra. Då ska vi kolla lite leksaker då. For our two-year-old daughter, we pack mostly dresses and loose shirts. And for our two-month-old son, we pack bodies in light colors and linen trousers. Since baby's that small, she'll be covered in clothes all the time and not wear sunscreen. I bought an ecological sunscreen to our daughter, which stays on top of the skin instead of sinking in, reflecting away the sunshine. I also bought some fluid replacements, which I hopefully won't need to use, but just in case. I bought them swimsuits and swim caps with sun protection, which will probably be their most used outfit. When I was packing, our daughter got really excited and dressed herself in the swimsuit, and she also dressed our baby boy. <laughs> the children's bag was finished except for diapers and food, which we packed in our other bags. We actually decided to travel more light than we needed to on our flight tickets, just because we figured that it would be difficult transporting all the items and children just the two of us. We decided on two big suitcases, three hand luggages, and one car seat for our baby boy and our double stroller. I started to get excited while packing my summer dresses and our daughter walked around with her little bag and her swimsuit on. I didn't have that much space for my own clothes as I wanted but it was all right. Before we went on this trip we celebrated Valentine's Day and Fetilsdagen, a day where you eat a special pastry called semla. We also had our daughter's birthday party since we couldn't have it at her birthday because of our baby boy being so little. I don't believe that it's really necessary for children to travel abroad at a very young age because the world that they live in is big enough for them to experience something new just by living. However, I do think that it can be very positive for a family to travel together. When you travel to another country, you are a little exposed, which means that you will probably end up having a tighter bond to your family because they are the only ones who experience the same as you. Unless you meet some people from your own country in the country you're in as well. And I think that's probably why when we are in another country and we meet people from our own country, we tend to have a stronger bond to them. Just because we have something in common, we come from the same com country and we are exposed to the same amount when we are in this new country. It's not just about facing obstacles together, but also experiencing adventure, because I think that adults need adventures in their lives. I really don't think that small children needs it, needs to travel or has a desire to travel, but when the adults get an adventure, this will of course have an effect on the family as a whole. However, when the children do get older, I think there are a lot of benefits for them as well to travel. Because actually, there are studies showing that 
When you have physical activities, you create brain cells. But in order for them to live, you need to stimulate your brain with new experiences and intellectual uh, problems, for example. So this means that you actually need to have experiences in your life in order to make your brain develop. So of course, this is really important for children. When you travel, you get a lot of new impressions and experiences. So this will, of course, have a positive impact on the brain. We tend to live in our own little bubble where we don't experience so many new things in our everyday. So this can be a good way to stimulate your brain. We want to take the opportunity to travel now when we have small children because then we don't have really any ties to the place that we're staying at right now. So we can travel for as long as we want and when we want, for example. So yeah, we're going to try to travel together as a family and uh, being away for a while so that we can have a daily routine in another country where William will work with his business and I will take care of the children. And in the weekends and the evenings, we will do activities together. We have traveled with our daughter pretty much before and we haven't had a problem at all. This time it was a bit more scarier because we had a 20 hour flight ahead of us. She laughed during the takeoffs and landings and our baby boy slept. Vi upp mot himlen. <laughs> Her presence for the flight was a real success. She spent a lot of time with it and she didn't even use the screens on the flights that had them. The reason for a long flight was because we wanted to have stops so that Saga could stretch her legs and get some energy out and we could change diapers and clothes more easily. And that was exactly what happened. She ran through the airports. When you travel with children and infants you usually get some extra service. For example, we got seated in the front with extra leg space on both of our long flights and our baby boy got a sleep bassinet on the wall to sleep in. The children slept half of the time on the second plane and the whole time during the last, which was perfect. Saga, what are we when we finally arrived at Bangkok, we unfortunately had one missing bag, and that was the bag with the children's clothes. Wow. Other than that, I had to say that the journey went really well. It just needs a little bit of planning and realistic expectations. <laughs>